A really important thing to be able to do when you start trying to make a game as a beginner is being able to create or spawn objects as well as destroy them. So I'm making this video to show you how to do that very easily to get started. And some examples, just so you can see in games how common this is. Here's a game I was working on with a friend called Junk Shop, where you can see if you press a button, it spawns in all of this junk that drops from a chute. So every time one of those objects is coming in, you have to create that in your game. It doesn't already exist. And then some other examples here is something like Super Mario Brothers. When you're running around, every time you hit a block, it spawns a coin or a power. So as you can see, in a game, to make it interactive and fun, it's very common that you have to spawn something in and then destroy it when it's used up. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna first learn how to create or spawn, which is called instantiating an object. So we're gonna learn how to do that to create the object in our game. And then after that, I'll show you how you can delete it. So the first thing we need is a prefab that we're gonna create in our game. If you're not familiar with prefabs, please check out my video on prefabs and that'll show you the basics. But essentially a prefab is just kind of a saved copy of an object. So just think of it as a saved object that you're able to bring into your game at any time you want. So to do this, I'm gonna right click on the hierarchy. I'm gonna create a 3D object and a cube. And this is gonna be the prefab I use right away. So right now it's at this position. I wanna set this back to zero. So I'm gonna click the dots here, reset. So now it's in the very center position zero, zero, zero. Now, all we have to do to create a prefab is click and drag on our cube and drag it into the project here. So now we have this box here that says cube and you can see an icon of it. That's our prefab. So this one in the hierarchy here, I can delete now. And now anytime, if we want a copy of this cube, and in this case, this is a simple cube, but you could think of this as being anything in your game. So this could be your entire player, this could be a car, a whole level. This can be anything you want. So it can be very complex. This example is just very basic, but think of this as anything you want in your game. Now, if I drag it in, I have that same cube every time. And notice that it starts at the same position that we saved our prefab at. Now to be able to create this in our game, we need a script running in our game. So in the hierarchy, I'm just gonna right click. I'm gonna create an empty. And I'm just gonna call this game controller. And this is gonna handle any logic for our game. I'm just gonna reset it to be at zeros here. And now we need to add a script to it. So we're gonna create one. I'm just gonna call this, let's do the same thing. I'm gonna call it game controller. Now that that's added, let's open it up. And now all we're gonna do here is in update, we're just gonna look for pressing the space key. And if we press the space, we want to spawn that object. So I'm just going to do if input dot get key down, we'll do key code dot space. And now this is where we want to actually create our object. So the first thing we need to do is get a reference to that cube or that prefab. So I'm just going to make a variable here. I'm going to make a serialized field variable. And all that's gonna do is allow it to show up in the inspector. This is gonna be a type game object and I'm just gonna call it cube. Or better yet, I'm gonna call it cube prefab. Now, if you're not familiar with what serialized field does, I will make some videos covering that shortly in the future. But for right now, what that's gonna let us do is actually get reference or access to our prefab inside the editor. And I'll demonstrate that right away. Because this variable is private, it won't show up. So if you don't understand that, I do recommend taking some time and learning what that means. But for the sake of this video, if you're not sure, just follow along and just add serialized field in brackets here before our variable. And what that will do is if we go back to our game, if we look at the game controller, now you see we have this box here that says cube prefab, and we can just drag and drop our cube in there. So now our game controller script knows what the cube is. Okay, and now to create that in our game, what we need to do is use something called instantiate. All we have to do is we wanna type instantiate and then we put brackets. Now think of the word instantiate as 
kind of create or spawn. So what instantiate means is it's going to create an object in our game that doesn't currently exist. So what we have to do is tell it what we want to create and it's this cube prefab. So if I type in cube prefab, if I save this. Now anytime we press space, it should create a cube in our game. Okay, so now if we run our game, so we have our empty scene here. If I press space, now I have a cube. And notice each time I press space, it's creating another cube. But they're actually on top of each other. So if I go to the scene, I can start moving them and you can see each one here. But we do have cubes being created each time we press space. Now, you notice all we did is we told it to create the cube. We didn't tell it what to do with it. So what it's doing is it's taking the position that's inside the cube prefab right now. So if I change this position, let's set this to be something like say five on the X, two on the Y, three on the Z. Now, if I drag it into the scene here, notice it spawns over here at five, two, three. When we run our game and press space, it's gonna do the exact same thing. See, so now it spawns here instead. So using this method, we don't really have control of where it spawns. It's gonna use what's in the prefab. And sometimes that's exactly what you want, but other times you wanna tell it where you want it to spawn. So we can do that here. If we put a comma, we can put in the position of it next. So we can either put in a new vector three right here. So I could say, maybe let's do two, two and two. But notice we have to include a third option here too, is if we're using the position, we also have to give it a rotation. So rotation's a, a pretty complex topic, but for this, what we wanna do is just leave it at its normal position. And this can be done by putting in what's called quaternion.identity. Now this is a, a bit of a complex one. A lot of people don't really understand how quaternions work and that's fine. You don't really need to, to do most of this work. So if you just put this in, all this means is use the rotation that's in the actual prefab. Okay, so now if we spawn this, it should spawn at 222. So let's click. And then if we check that cube, see it spawned at 222. So this is the way you can control where you spawn an object. So if you had a variable to store this vector instead, so say if we copied this or cut this, let's make a variable. We'll do a private vector three and we'll call this uh, spawn position. Now all we have to do is put spawn position in here. So now throughout our game, spawn position can change any place you want. And this code is always gonna spawn it at the spawn position. Okay, so that's spawning. Now we have to cover how to actually get rid of objects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this same code here. Let's go back to our game. And instead of on the game controller, what I'm gonna do is let's open this prefab. So double click on this prefab. Now we can edit it. Click on add component and let's add a script here. Let's just call, call this destroy self. Okay, so we create an add. Now we have this script on the cube called destroy self. Let's open it up. And now in update, I'm just gonna paste that code. Instead of using space though, let's do, let's do the escape key. And now we don't want to instantiate this time. What we want to do is use a, a command called destroy. And in here, we just have to tell it to destroy itself. And we can do that just by putting game object with a lowercase g. And what that means is this game object. So basically that's talking about the object that this script is on. So now anytime on the cube, if we press escape, it's going to destroy. And the important part here to remember is this script is on the cube itself. So every cube in our game is gonna be watching. If we press escape, it's gonna destroy all of them, not just one. So let's run our game. Now to demonstrate, I hit space once, so I have one cube here. 
I'm going to hit it a couple more so we have a few. If I go into the scene view, I'm going to move these around. So now you can see multiple. Now if I press escape, they're all gone. So it destroys all of them. So that's a simple way of how you can destroy objects. And one quick one I'm going to show you here, if we didn't want to do this and say, say you have a, a missile launcher or, you know, a volcano that's shooting out rocks on fire of magma flying at the player, but you want them to only last a certain amount of time. What we can do is in here, if we go into start of our destroy self script, we could put in destroy again with game object. So just like we did, but this will destroy it instantly when it starts, but we can give it a time. So if we put a comma, now we can put a time of how long until it destroys. So if I put this to 2F, what this means is as soon as this object is created, start's going to run and it's going to say destroy myself after two seconds. So now let's go run this and demonstrate. Okay, I'm going to press space, it's spawn. I'm not pressing anything, it's gone. Press space again, another one comes back, gone. Okay, so there's a, a few different ways how you can create and destroy objects. This is something that'll get you started on any game you're working on. You almost always have to create and destroy objects in your game. So I wanted to make sure you have a simple video explaining that topic here. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.